Okay. <laughs> all right. So as you all know, we have a major problem with being overly dependent on oil. Um, our dependence on oil results in all kinds of problems, such as air pollution, which, has, which can cause adverse health effects in the very young, the very old, and a lot of us in between. It also causes climate change, which is a whole huge subject unto itself that I'm not really going to get into. Um, another problem is that we, right here in the U.S., we import two-thirds of the oil that we use, uh, which is a lot more than we did back in the 70s. So we're even more vulnerable to shortages now than we were back then. And there's a photo from back then when they had gas lines. Right now we're importing over 13 million barrels of oil a day. So even though oil prices have come down recently, that's still over $300 billion a year that we're, we're sending overseas. And if oil prices go back up to, you know, 140, 150 where they were recently, that'd be, you know, six or seven hundred billion. So given the financial crisis and the economy right now, it'd be nice to keep that money here. Um, so one solution is to reduce your personal oil consumption. But how do you maintain individual mobility, you know, if you're not really into biking or, or walking long distances? You can get uh, an inexpensive alternative fuel vehicle, unlike the uh, really cool Tesla, which is way out of my price range. Um, so I was looking for something that could uh, basically handle my 10-mile round-trip commute. Luckily, I don't live too far from work, and it's only on surface streets. So there are a bunch of different uh, alternative fuels out there that you can uh, look at. Um, and so the question is, you know, which one do you want to get? So the Department of Energy, they have a really cool website which lists the pros and cons of different alternative fuels. They even uh, have a kind of a store locator to show you where you can find different alternative fuels. You can just punch in your address, and it'll show you if there's anything near your house. Um, so basically, that was a good starting point. So I ended up deciding to get an electric scooter. Uh, basically, the fuel just comes out of a wall outlet. So, you know, I've got that in my house. Depending on how much you want to spend, you can get a, you know, one that has a range of only 10 miles or up to 55. Speeds maybe 15 up to 62. You know, 15 is still faster than a zombie, so, you know. <laughs> so anyway, what I ended up getting was uh, this model here, the EVT-168. It, it's got a range of 35 miles, and it goes about 30 miles an hour. Uh, it's got a locking trunk, and it's got that stylish uh, Vespa styling, which is I thought was cool. Um, you can find it for under 2,500, but obviously, you know, do your research. You know, use your favorite search engine to get info on you know, various models or, uh, you know, various dealers. There aren't too many dealers here in Phoenix, unfortunately, so that could be a business opportunity for people. Um, it's really economical to own. So basically, it only costs me six-tenths of a cent per mile to ride it. So I'm only spending $1.20 a month uh, for my commute, you know. And so if you compare that to driving a gas car, you know, if you get, let's say, 20 miles per gallon and you're paying 3 bucks a gallon for gas, you're paying about 30 bucks, you know. So you're sa I'm saving right now, I'm saving $29 a month versus driving my car to work. Um, <clears throat> and if you go the full, uh, the full distance that the scooter is capable of, you know, I'm only going 10 miles a day, but uh, if you go, you know, the full 35 miles a day, then you could do 700 miles a month and you would spend $4.20 a month instead of $105. So you're saving over $100 a month by riding an electric scooter like that. Um, so, you know, basically the scooter could pay for itself in a little over two years, which is uh, pretty cool. You know? so, um, so if you think about it in terms of miles per gallon, it's like getting 500 miles per gallon. Um, you know, if you, do, if you use the math with that same example. Um, so that always kind of, kind of impresses people because, you know, we're, right now we're kind of impressed if a car gets 40 or 50 miles per gallon. So, you know, 500 is a heck of a lot better than that. Um, so the low-cost theme continues. They're cheap to insure. You know, it's less than 100 bucks a year and registration is less than $10 a year. Um, I don't think, honestly, that you could really replace a car with a scooter. It won't cover all your needs, but it can help you, uh, you know, cut down on your driving a lot and save you some money in the process. Um, another thing here, it's low maintenance, so no oil changes, no valve jobs, no nothing like that. So it's a lot, a lot cheaper to, to own. You don't have to deal with, uh, you know, repairmen who try to rip you off or anything like that. So um, that's a nice, nice benefit as well. Uh, let's see, what's the next one on here? <laughs> okay, so, yeah, they're really quiet too. So, um, you know, basically you won't wake your neighbors, you won't scare kids. Uh, you can sneak up on people in the parking lot. You know, it's kind of kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> have to be careful not to startle them. <laughs> I've done that before. Um, but yeah, so you know, it's it's another nice thing. Uh, they're actually electric vehicles are often called you know zero emissions, but that's that's not really true. I mean, they're they're, they're as dirty as the power plant. But even so, even when you take that into account, they're still cleaner than you know if you're getting 275 miles per gallon in a car. So um, yeah, basically then also, you know, they're they're less intimidating than a motorcycle, and uh, you'll be less intimidating you know than one of these Mad Max guys. You know, if you're riding one. Um, people who have no experience riding one usually have no problem picking up the scooter, you know, and riding it. Um, let's see. So basically, you know, if you're green, uh, if you're a scooter rebel with a cause, you'll save money, you'll help save the environment, and you'll help break our oil addiction. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.